Hey everybody, it's Chad with Nobody Else's Auto. It is time for Toy Tuesday. It is seven o'clock Central Time Tuesday evening. We are live. If you're watching this at a different time, it is being recorded live at seven on Tuesday. We'll give everybody a few seconds to jump on with us and then we'll get rolling tonight. So we'll take a 20 or 30 second break, let everybody get on and then we'll be going. Okay, we've got some people jumping on with us. Thanks for being here. It is Toy Tuesday Live. We're going to do a bunch of memorabilia tonight that uh, followed me home from Meekum Indy. Uh, this is pretty much all stuff out of the absolutely amazing John Atzbach collection. Um, we are live on the Nobody Else's Auto page. I am outside in front of the shop hoping comments are going to cooperate tonight. Um, so we will see if that does work. Um, nothing's popped up yet, but we'll see if they're going to cooperate. Like I said, it's been kind of a crapshoot these last several weeks as to whether or not comments have worked. So if they don't, I apologize. I'm trying to do what I can from my end. We'll just see if the system is going to cooperate with us and give us anything. So that being said, let's roll into tonight's episode of Toy Tuesday and check out some cool memorabilia. Got some really amazing stuff. Um, when we were in Indy, uh, we actually you know, we hit the live memorabilia auctions, but they had a ton of stuff online. And since we were there, you know, as those online auctions were getting ready to end, my daughter and I, we were using her phone and just walking around looking at some of the stuff and literally bidding on it on her phone as we were walking around. And at the end of the auction, there was some stuff that didn't have much action on it. So we bid on some of that stuff and ended up buying a few pieces pretty reasonable that didn't even realize didn't really actually realize what we had bought until we've done a little research on it now that we've gotten it back home and started studying it. So we're going to get into some of that tonight and we've got kind of a, a smorgasbord of stuff, but some of it is just so cool. And the history that we found and learned as we started getting into it was amazing. Plus one of the rarest badges in my collection. I know if you've been here before, you've seen, I've got a ton of badges, ton of emblems. We collect a lot of that stuff. One of the rarest ones I've got and a really great story behind that. So hopefully I don't ramble on too long tonight. If I do, tell me to shut up. <laughs> I'll try not to, but just a lot of cool stuff to cover, but probably not quite enough to break it up into two episodes. So still am not seeing comments. So Facebook may not be cooperating with us once again. Um, we'll have to do what we can. Last week, same thing. I tried to be outside, tried to have some, some clear air outside of the metal building and uh, it still didn't work, and that may be what we're up against tonight. So anyway, that being said, let's get rolling and check out some of this stuff. Let's flip the camera around. I'll give you kind of an overview. We'll start looking at some stuff and get into some cool details. So got a whole bunch of stuff scattered out around here, and we'll start getting into some of this stuff and checking some of this stuff out and showing you some of the details and what's just so cool about some of this stuff. Start off with the valve covers here. You know, I think these are new. Shelby powered by Ford. Not a real exciting piece, but they're cool. I've got a lot of valve covers on the wall. So we picked up a set of these to add to, you know, the Hemi valve covers and the Viper valve covers and the Chevy valve covers and things like that that I've got hanging on the wall. So went ahead and picked those up. We'll get those out of the way. And then we'll start doing some more looking at some of this stuff. This piece here, didn't even realize what this was. Bought this online, on the online auction. One of those pieces that didn't have a lot of action on it. We bid on it at the last minute and ended up getting it bought. Best wish is Bob Johnson. Well, after a little research of who is Bob Johnson, um, as far as his ties to Shelby's or Ford or Mustangs, things like that, because obviously, you know, the John Atzbach collection, that's what it focused on were Shelby Mustangs. Obviously, I'm sure all of you have heard about uh, Car 5R002 that hammered at 3.5 million with a total selling price of 3.85 million was the, the highlight, the centerpiece of this collection. So we started looking this stuff up, looking at these names of this autograph of who was Bob Johnson. Well, kind of an interesting thing. Bob Johnson actually drove for Shelby. He uh, actually, in 1963, in Lake Garnett, Kansas, in a Cobra, along with drivers Dave McDonald and Ken Miles, which obviously, if you've heard Ford, watched Ford versus Ferrari, you've heard of Ken Miles, all drove Cobras at that race and slaughtered the Corvettes in the SCCA race, which was one of the big breakthrough races for the Cobra. He also drove... Uh, in Le Mans, he drove in a, drove a Daytona Coupe in Le Mans. He drove a Ford GT in Le Mans. 
absolutely amazing race history associated with this and didn't even know it when we bought it so there again just a cool piece that you know looked neat didn't have a lot of action on it so we jumped on it and snagged it the next piece we've got here is kind of the same deal it's a big picture a big collage of pictures actually several different types of vehicles once again neat piece online didn't have a lot of action on it so we kind of jumped in at the last second, not actually totally realizing what we were bidding on. But it had a lot of cool pictures, had some interesting stuff on here. And did a little bit of research. They had it tagged as a Roy Lum piece. So, well, I didn't know who Roy Lum was. Just a, a really varied collage here of pictures of a lot of different stuff. So once again, a little research talk about a fascinating guy i mean he flew with the royal air force in world war ii he had a degree in mechanical and aeronautical engineering he actually went to work for ford in the early 50s in england uh became a u.s citizen in 62 was uh instrumental in the development of uh the two-seat or uh, mustang one prototype uh, he was involved in the development of the GT40 after the uh, after Ford did not get Ferrari bought. He was instrumental in uh, working with Carcraft and getting the Boss 429 Mustangs built. And then to shift gears, he ended up with AMC in 1971 as director of engineering. So he was involved in a lot of the AMC cars. He was involved in the AMC Eagles when they made the four-wheel drive cars, when they put the four-wheel drive chassis under a car. He was instrumental in that. He was instrumental in the development of the very first Jeep Cherokees that obviously you know, were, became what we know as sport utility vehicles today and are extremely popular. So once again, a piece that just looked cool, thought we'd take a chance on it, didn't have a lot of action on the online part, and then after a little research, I actually realized, wow, there was, this was an amazing individual who did a lot of stuff and was really instrumental in Ford and AMC from the 50s all the way up into the early 80s. So, and even with the Renault Jeep racing team. So just super cool stuff. Like I said, you never know what you're going to get with some of this stuff. And we took a chance on it and ended up with just some great pieces. Did get a Ford sign. Philco Ford. This is double-sided painted. Nice little sign. Ford logo. You know, Philco, probably a radio type sign, but a nice piece. Double-sided and looks good on both sides. The next things we're going to get into, we've showed you some of these before, but after some research and a little more studying, found out some really cool stuff we've talked about some of these checks we've looked at some of these checks in previous episodes you know shelby american to the ford motor company shelby american to the ford to ford motor credit uh you know you start studying some of these names max muleman had something to do with marketing with shelby and a couple other ones different types these are kind of a pinkish check shelby american so some things like that bought a, a kind of a smorgasbord of them actually have plenty of them i will probably actually sell off a few of these but um, there's a couple more checks we're going to get into and i did i got into these a little more detail on the sunday night chat if you didn't catch the sunday night chat live you can always go back and watch those um what happened on these last couple of checks is we were uh, actually a buddy of mine that was where with me i have the bidders pass there was a gsx coming up that he wanted to bid on so we ran over to, to the car auction because they run the car auction and the memorabilia auction separately so we run over to the car auction to, to watch the gsx which he actually did get bought so that was pretty cool we left my daughter and his daughter at the memorabilia collection at the memorabilia auction said hey if something cool pops up looks like a good deal go ahead and snag it so we got back and i asked my daughter said you buy anything she said yeah we got a couple of checks okay so these are the checks she bought once again didn't really know exactly what we were buying when we bought them but this check here was to bob holbert once again looked like a cool piece thought i'd heard the name before somewhere so we do a little digging do a little research do a little googling and uh he actually was a uh, factory team actually had a, a very a very important career with porsche one of the very first Porsche dealers 
in the, in the United States, raced Porsches in the 50s, became a Shelby team driver in the 60s, and actually won Sebring in 64 in a Daytona Coupe. And uh, he raced with uh, his co-driver was Dave McDonald, which uh, we just mentioned uh, was one of the Cobra drivers along with Ken Miles in, uh, on some of the other stuff we just talked about. And, um, you know, and he raced until the late 60s when uh, Dave McDonald was killed in the crash, and then Bob Holbert gave it up. But once again, you know, uh, probably a paycheck for, for driving, uh, driving Daytona Coupes or Cobras in races. So pretty cool piece there. Once again, I apologize. I'm not getting any comments whatsoever. So if you guys are commenting, I apologize. Facebook is not showing them to me. So we've got a pretty good crowd on, and uh, I apologize. I'm not getting any of it. The last check that my daughter bought, uh, Joe Slezer, who was actually French, drove for Ford of France, and uh, and actually drove in the 1964 Daytona 500 in a Ford. Once again, a very storied racing history uh, with that driver. So, like I said, it was pretty cool. Didn't really know what we bought when she bought those couple of checks, but some really great pieces. And like I said, so that's what we got. Uh, can, I'm still not getting comments, and it's I'm getting some connection issue notices out of Facebook uh, for some reason. I don't know why, but it is not cooperating with us tonight, so I apologize. But, you know, this stuff all come out of the John Atzbaugh collection and just amazing stuff. What, what John had put together as far as Shelby's and Mustangs and Cobras was just, it was second to none. It was amazing to see all that stuff in person, be able to bring a few pieces of it home, be able to add some of it to my own collection that, uh, you know, my daughter and I have been put, putting together and working on and gathering up together. So, you know, this stuff is, these are pieces of history with these names and these checks and these, these the research and the history and the photos and the autographs that uh, that came with this stuff. So... One more piece tonight. Obviously, anybody that's hung out here with me before knows we like emblems and badges and knickknack stuff. And uh, and it's just, it's neat. It's a piece of the car. It's a piece of history. And there's one more piece we're going to talk about tonight that is one of the rarest badges in my collection. Also out of the Atzbaugh collection um, that we got at Mecham Indy. And this is it. This is an original Cobra badge off of a very very early cobra this is an original there's the tag that came with it and uh didn't really know what the story was on this piece um my daughter and i looked at it they had several cobra badges there most of them were all original pieces. and as we studied them we looked at the options we thought about buying one and my daughter said i like that one it's different it stands out let's go after that one so we get it bought and I didn't even know, really know what I had bought. It is a metal badge, studs on the back. Obviously shows a little bit of age to it. And it is an original piece. So, not sure what I got. Obviously, if I've got something with, that is Ford related and I'm not sure what I've got, I've got a guy that I ask. If you've seen my videos before, if you've hung out with me before, you have seen some of the interviews, some of the videos, and some of the stuff we've done with my friend Jim Wicks. Jim is the go-to guy for Shelby or Cobra. If I've got a question about Mustang, Shelby's, Cobras, I call Jim, I tell him what I'm up against, explain the situation, and he rattles off the answer. He doesn't look it up. He doesn't get a book out. He doesn't Google it. He just tells me what the answer is. So <laughs> uh, he's got, you know, decades of experience with these cars. I don't know if there's anybody that knows these cars as well as Jim does, even to the point where he was very instrumental in, in sourcing a lot of the correct parts for 5R002, which is now the most valuable Mustang in the world at $3.85 million. He was heavily involved in that restoration. So if you have not caught those videos, please go back, check those out. Those were great videos we did. So I asked Jim, I said, I bought this badge. What's the significance of this badge? He said, well, really, he has a belt buckle made out of this, out of a, or not out of one of these badges, but they made a batch of these and made belt buckles out of them because he needed one and they could not find one. So I said, "What's the significance of this badge?" Then it's an early, it says early Cobra. Well, the story was the very the t first twenty Cobras that were shipped over from AC and converted to a Shelby Cobra had a football shaped badge that said AC in the middle and it said Shelby across the top and Cobra across the bottom and it was shaped some, some similar to a football. After those first 20 cars were built, this badge here 
is the badge they went to. This badge was used, they had two per car, one on the front, one on the back, on the next 50 to 60 Cobras that were built. After that, somewhere around car 70, 80, maybe close to 90, they went to a different style badge that is more very similar to the more common one that has been used that was used for years and is used on even on a lot of the replica cars today. So this badge was used on 50 to 60 cars, um, one on the front, one on the back. So there were probably 100 to 150, maybe 200 of these badges ever made that were original. Um, so not a lot of those out there. It's an iconic piece of an iconic car with a very storied history behind it. You know, and, and the fact that this is an original piece, it's not a reproduction. Uh, in fact, when I asked Jim about it, he said, you know, you several years ago, they had to have literally have a jeweler hand make one because they were doing a restoration on an early Cobra and could not find one of these badges at the time. So super cool piece, uh, at least to me. I mean, obviously my daughter and I, we like a lot of the badge stuff. We like, to, you know, we have a very, very wide interest in cars and a very, very wide variety of cars. But these little pieces like this that are a piece of history that go with it. And when we tie all this stuff together that we've been talking about, we've been talking about it on some of the other Toy Tuesdays, you know, the checks, the history, the story, the names, the racing history, the stuff that goes with all this, it's just great. I mean, then that's why we do it. That's why we love cars. That's why we love the history. That's why we love the stories. So really great stuff. Super excited about it. I apologize. I wish I could get comments, but this thing is just not wanting to and it's giving me network connection issues again and i'm not sure why because i'm not even in the metal building hoping to get a good connection tonight but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys enjoyed it as much as i enjoyed showing it to you and as much as for you know the fun that we've had doing the research learning about roy lum learning about these drivers learning about the history of what made the cobra the shelby the contenders in their day and what really made history as we know it and that's why you still see shelby mustangs on four dealer showrooms today it all ties back to this stuff we have right here the stuff that we're talking about the stuff we're learning the stuff i'm learning from talking to my friend jim wicks talking you know studying the stuff from the john asbach collection and uh it's just cool and that's why we love it and that's why i hope you're here and that's why i hope you're here hanging out with me on toy tuesday because it's the stories it's the history and that's what makes it fun. So anyway, that's what I've got for you tonight. I apologize on the comment situation. I really wish I could get them. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I didn't ramble on too long. But um, that's what we've got for tonight. Next week, I've got... Uh, actually, I found a box of stuff I bought at Meek and Mindy last year that we haven't talked about yet. So I may try to squeeze that in on Toy Tuesday. I've got... Um, some uh oh shot some more video in the yard where i'm starting to sort some cars out starting to get some things organized we'll probably post that tomorrow night we'll do some more pioneer village on friday night and uh that's what's coming up as always if you have any specific questions about vehicles or parts just give me a call 620-786-4428 and uh we will see you soon thanks for watching everybody i really appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your evening to hang out with me hope you enjoyed the video hope you enjoyed the memorabilia and the history behind some of this cobra and shelby stuff so thanks for watching everybody and we will see you soon